Hey, how's it going? I'm Hagar. Welcome to Mama Mandala. Before we begin our exploration of an aspect or a lens through which we can look at the Bhagavad Gita, I wanted to invite you to subscribe to this channel. So if you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel and also head over to mamamandala.com. I'm going to leave a link in the description of the video so that you can click on it and head over to Mama Mandala and subscribe to our newsletter to our email list because I would love to stay in touch with you and send you some inspirational, explorational, contemplative messages and you're gonna love them. So we're gonna dive in into a little bit of a Bhagavad Gita exploration. The Bhagavad Gita is a, is a text that's actually derived and brought in and drawn from the Mahabharata, which is an epic text from India, written over about 800 years from 400 BCE to 400 CE. So a big compilation of stories that weave into each other in such a way that remind us of life's complexity. And this is in a way the the lens through which I want to invite us to look at the Bhagavad Gita. Today's exploration, we're not even diving quite into the text yet, but I wanted to explore with you the, the name. So Gita in Sanskrit means song, and it refers to the way that the, the Hindu tradition, the Indian tradition, all the way from the days of the Veda, which are which, which over thousands of years, the Vedic people have traveled from Europe and all the way to India and came all the way there and brought with them the, the Vedas, which was a text that it was, an, it was an oral tradition, so it wasn't quite a text yet, but it was a compilation of songs, of hymns to the powers of nature, to what they, what they saw around them, what they, um, uh, what, what they came across along their way, the powers of nature and the, in their relationship with them. So it's, the, it's, it's, a, it's a text that's actually coming from a place of listening. So the rishis, which is translated as seers, isn't that cool? So the seers were hearing the universe. There was li they were listening to the universe and hearing it in its song, in its sounds, in its, in its expression. So the Gita, the, the word Gita means a song because in Indian culture, the universe is singing itself into being and we are here listening to it. Bhagavad can translate as the Blessed One. So often Bhagavad Gita is uh, translated as the Song of the Blessed One. It refers to Krishna, who is the, um, one, of the, one of the main characters in the Bhagavad Gita. And he is an avatar. So he is the way that the divine crosses over and arrives in an embodied form like you, like all of us. And Bhagavad is referring to it's the blessed one because it refers to everything that is nourishing about life, everything that is delicious and caring and nurturing and giving you life. So Bhagavad is the blessed one because it's a nourishing and a nurturing quality. But here is where we can spin it and look at it in a more... A complex kind of a way in a paradoxical way because life is complex and paradoxical so when we're listening for this for the for the song of the blessed one when we go into our yoga practice which we're going to do together in a moment when we go into our interaction with our lives into our day we're invited to listen to life to receive life as a blessing. Now it gets complex because life doesn't always feel like a blessing. And Krishna is a complex character. He's a trickster. He doesn't always do the right thing. The text is a text about war. We're set. The setting is the the space between two armies. We're about to go to war when the text begins, and and it's intense and fierce and ferocious. And we all know that in war, there's no good good guys and bad guys. It's it's a mess. 
it's complex. It's complicated. Of course, there's going to be um, there's going to be some some sides that we that we take, but you know, there's there's it, it's more complicated than that. And Krishna is translated as the dark one or the dark blue one, the black one, and it refers to the way that Krishna is a representation of the cosmos. It's the black dark sky of the infinite. It's everything that exists. It's the ferocity and the gentleness. It's the sacredness and the secularity. It's the, the invitation into nourishment and to caring, but without forgetting that anything that feeds us had to die or has to die for us to be nourished, right? Even I'm vegan and even I, when I eat, I eat something that has been disconnected from its source of life in order to nourish my body. So there's, there's death that is woven into life and there's a ferocity that's, that's always interwoven into the blessing of life. The greatest blessing of life is love and it never comes without grief. I'm a mom of two kids and the grief is deep. Let me tell you, it is the most profound love I've ever felt in my life, but I am losing them every day. Every day that goes by, they are no longer my babies, right? They are, they're growing away and apart from my body, right? Like not, they're no, neither one of them is a toddler anymore. I have, I have kids that are now, you know, in, in, a, in, a, in deep and, and profound journeys of individuation. And so there is a gorgeousness to seeing it, to bearing witness to it. And the love only grows deeper and deeper. And yet there, it, it, it's never without its sadness. It's never without the loss of the, of the babiness, of the softness of those, of those beginning days. And so we're reminded when we, when we listen to the song of the Blessed One, when we arrive in a conversation with life that is listening to how it presents itself to us, we can cultivate through our yoga practice. And this is kind of my jam. This is what I love to do, to cultivate a vessel that can receive life in its wholeness, in its fullness. So we're not bypassing the, the intensity. We're not bypassing the trauma or the pain. We're making room for it, but we're making room for more than it. We're not only going to receive the things that feel sweet, but we're also going to bring in, since we're talking nourishment, we're going to allow the sour in as well. We're going to, we're going to make space for all the flavors. We're going to make room for all the colors and all the textures of our experience because life shows itself as, as diversity, as a, as a wide and wild variety of possibilities and our practice, our yoga, which we're going into right now, is the place that we can create deep listening, a sensitivity that allows in what is, what's present, and the capacity to be powerful so that we can hold it, and the ability to hold it in such a way that it can keep moving and can keep flowing so we're not um, clinching to it and holding it tightly and not letting it move so it's not stagnant. Ha! Huh. Shall we? Go ahead and sit back on your heels for a moment. And if sitting back on your heels does not feel good for you, you can take a different uh, seated position. Put your hands on your belly and let your eyes soften. You can close them if that feels good for you. And take a deep breath in and expand your belly into your hands. And with a slow exhalation, simply let your belly rest back. And we'll do that two more times. Big belly as you inhale. And a soft resting back as you exhale. 
This helps to tone the nervous system. Inhale deeply one more time. To regulate our nervous system and exhale slowly. And then put your hands over your heart and soft, deep breath in. I live in LA and there are, there's never a dull moment. There's always sounds. Exhale, open the arms out to the sides, open yourself up and connect yourself to the world around you as you offer your breath back out. And then inhale, bring your hands to your heart again. You can let your heart rest back and maybe even tilt your chin in. And then exhale and lift your chest and open your arms and we'll do that one more time. Inhale, soften back as you expand your belly and broaden your chest. And exhale, open the arms out to the sides and lift your chest. Then put your hands on the ground in front of you and with an inhalation, tilt your hips back and up and your chest forward and up and then with an exhalation looking towards your navel lift your belly up and press your hands deeply into the ground and then inhale again lift your chest forward and up your hips up and back cow pose and then exhale round your back as you press your hands into the floor into cat bring a tone to the back of your throat if you haven't already inhale Hips back, chest forward. Ujjayi breath. Exhale, round your back. With an inhalation, come to the space between cat and cow. So the hips are back and the chest is forward, but the belly is lifted. And exhale, lift up and back into Adho Mukha Shivanasana, downward facing dog. Hips reach up and back, hands root into the earth. And if downward facing dog isn't a your thing today, if this is not a good idea for you to put your hands on the ground like that and bear so much weight, you can stay on all fours like we had our body before, or you can put your hands on a wall with your knees bent a little bit so that you give yourself um, the stretch in the backs of your legs and your hamstrings, but you're doing that in a respectful way for your body. You can put your hands on a chair or on a wall and push your hands into it. With an inhalation, lift your right leg up. Spread your toes a little bit so your leg is strong. Right leg way up high and then exhale. Bring your right foot outside of your right hand and bring your left knee down to the floor and move your hips a little bit side to side as you breathe here. Making room in your body, moving things around. So often we think of our ability to listen clearly as something that needs to happen with stillness and not for all of us, you know? Sometimes for some of us that's true, but often I need to move things around in order to listen more clearly to what's moving in me, through me, around me. How about you? Deep breath in. And then exhale, reach up and back. Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog, or hands on a wall or on a chair. Hands are rooted. Inhale the left leg up, spread your toes and lift your leg as high as feels good for you. Exhale, bring your left foot outside of your left hand and right knee to the floor. So that listening to life, listening to the nourishment, to the blessings, to the way that the blessing is complex and paradoxical, move your hips around a little bit, can be that listening skill can be increased as we practice yoga. It's one way to do it, not the only way because we can listen to what our body is saying and our body is a magic wand. Our body is the greatest information receiver. It really tells us what's going on. 
So listen to it. What do you need? Like, for example, right now I feel a little bit of an overstretch in the front of my right thigh. So without listening, I can take an action. I can lift my right hip a little higher so I'm not overstretching. Deep breath in, root your hands down. And exhale, stretch up and back, downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Inhale and bring your knees to the floor with your hands rooted, especially the part of your hand that wants to lift up off the floor. And with an exhalation, take your chest forward, but take your hips forward and down and point your feet. Spread your toes. We're in cobra pose and move a little bit side to side. So again, perhaps the listening to the way that life is pouring and moving and dancing, perhaps the listening comes through your own dance, through moving from side to side like a serpent, so that the serpent vision, the sarpa drishti in Sanskrit, is our ability to look from the right and look from the left and weave through the center. Deep breath in, root down into your hands, and exhale, tuck your toes and stretch up and back into downward facing dog, Adho Mukha, Svanasana. Root down into your heels and into your hands. Deep breath in. And with a slow exhalation, walk your hands back towards your feet into Uttanasana, forward bend. And you can bend your knees for this position if that's what your body needs. You can stretch your legs straight and fold deeply in. You can put your hands on blocks or on a stool or maybe on a chair and again, maybe on a wall. So whatever it is that you need, you're listening. And the blessing is the way that life is showing itself to you. The knowledge that you're gaining through the increase of sensitivity and the ability to open yourself up to what's, what's here for you what's showing itself to you. Slow breathing. Ground and root into the balls of your feet just as much as you do into your heels. Look forward as you inhale. Fold in slowly as you exhale. Crown of your head towards the earth. Inhale, look forward, send your chest forward. And Energetically pull your heels back so your legs are strong, creating, exhale, fold in, a strong vessel that can hold, not only receive, but then hold what is happening, what is moving, what is speaking. Inhale, look forward. Strong legs, strong hips as you pull your legs towards each other and push them apart, fold in as you breathe out. Inhale, bend your knees and bring your forearms to your thighs, reach your hips back and your chest forward. And with an exhalation, put your hands on your thighs, close to your knees and round your back. Inhale, bend your knees, forearms to your thighs, chest forward, hips back. Exhale, put your hands on your thighs and round your back. And one more, inhale. Slide your forearms to your thighs. Send your chest forward and your hips back. And exhale to put your hands on your thighs and round your back. And then from here, hips back, chest forward, spread your wings. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, slowly bring your hands to your heart. Anjali Mudra. And let's do that two more times. Inhale, reach your arms up to the sky. Circle the arms around you. Exhale, slowly lower your hands. Bring them to the front of the heart. So all that deep breathing and all those fluctuations of the spine. Inhale, one more time. Reach your arms up high. can help our nervous system regulate. It tones the... Nervous system, exhale, bring your hands to your heart, particularly the vagal nerve. And when our nervous system is regulated, we can actually listen more clearly and 
carefully to what's going on around us. Release your arms and stand on your right leg and lift your left leg up into Vrikshasana, into tree pose, foot into the thigh. I love holding my ankle and lifting the foot up high this way, <laughs> and then I fall. And then put your hands together in Anjali Mudra in front of your heart and breathe. When you're ready, if you're ready, you can reach your arms up high and you can always do this next to a wall so that you can put your hands on the wall so that if balance is an issue like it is for me, you have something to support you. Breathe slowly. And you're taking the form of the tree so that we remember the interconnectedness. We remember that our breath, you keep breathing deeply, is never separate from the plant world. We're never separate from our environment. The trees are in our bodies and we are in the bodies of the trees because we're breathing together. Release your arms, release your legs, stand on your left leg and lift your right leg up. And again, you can use your hand on your ankle to lift it up, hands together in front of your heart, slow breath. You take the form of that which nourishes you, nourishes your lungs, nourishes your whole body, your blood sends oxygen through your whole entire body because of trees. Reach your arms up high. And you are also the nourishment. You nourish the trees back. You nourish your nourishment for all kinds of bacteria and fungi and viruses. Slow breath, we're always intertwined with more than ourselves. We're nourishment and nourishing and nourished. Can you hear it? Can you feel it? Deep breath. Exhale, release your arms and release your legs. And then lift your left leg up with your knee bent. Flex your foot a little bit so your leg is a little stronger. Put your right hand outside of your left leg and reach your left arm behind you as you twist your body to the right, slow breath. As you twist your body to the right, make the right side of the body resist the twist. So pull the right ASIS, the anterior superior iliac spine, the front of the right hip bone towards the left, the right, the left ribs towards the right, and then open your chest to the left. One more inhale. Slow exhale, whoops, sorry. <laughs> and inhale, slowly bring your leg down and release it, shake it out. Notice what your body needs. Stand on your left leg, lift your right leg up, slow breath in. Flex the foot and spread your toes and bring your left hand outside of your right knee. Reach your right arm behind you and open your chest to the right as you breathe. And you open, but you also resist. And the resistance, the right ASIS draws to the left, the right ribs draw to the left. That resistance, again, creates the strength that creates the vessel that can hold and handle and allow the energy, the, the, the experiences, the different expressions to move through us. And twist as you inhale. And exhale, release the leg and shake it out. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Move in whatever way that feels good to release the tension that this may create. And then again, stand on your right leg. Lift your left leg up again with your knee bent. This time, hold on to the front of the knee and open the leg to the left, right arm to the right. Breathe in as you flex your foot. Breathe out slowly as you lengthen your spine and ground into the right foot. Slow breath in. And a slow breath out and a part of the listening has to happen in those places where life feels shaky, when balance is difficult. Slowly with an inhalation, bring your leg down 
And again, what does your body need? How does it want to move? Is there any particular way? I'm doing it my way. Do you, are you doing it yours? And then stand on your left leg and right leg goes up. Hold the knee, flex the foot, and open the right leg to the right and the left arm to the left. Ground into the left foot, extends tall through the spine and breathe. So we often think we need to listen, so we need to create a clear space for listening. And again, motherhood has, is teaching me that there might not be a clarity for listening. So I have to learn how to listen inside the chaos and the noise and the mess. Inhale and bring your leg back down to the floor and move it in the way that feels good for you. Shake it out and stand again on your right leg. We're going to bring the left leg, left foot outside of your right knee. Flex the left foot, spread your toes, bend the right knee and you can put your hands on a chair, on a wall, slowly lower down and maybe go closer to the floor, maybe a stool, maybe blocks, maybe your hands all the way down and you can put your hand, your right hand on the ball of your left foot and lengthen your spine as you breathe. So we're opening and strengthening. Slow breath. Being with the complexity of it, with a paradox of listening in the chaos, in the mess. And then reach your hips back and chest forward to come up with an inhale. And release it, shake it, move it. And we'll do the other side. Bring your right foot outside of your left knee and bend the left knee. And check in as you go. You can check what you need, maybe on the wall, maybe on, on a chair with your hands, maybe on a stool or a block, or your hands all the way down. You're checking in and you're listening along the way to what you need to what your body is asking of you. Slow breath. And you can put your left hand and the ball of your right foot into each other. And then send your hips back and your chest forward to slowly come up, inhale. And release it and shake it out in whatever way that feels good. And then with your feet separated as wide as your outer hips or even a little wider, move the hips a little side to side. My hands are on my thighs because I'm going to start to come down through Malasana. I'm making the coming down a little dramatic, but it feels good. Move the hips a little side to side. Move the torso so that the sides of your torso can come into the space between your thighs so you're in malasana for just a moment but it feels good and then sit all the way down and you can bring one foot in front of the other you can put one foot in half padmasana ardha padmasana half lotus your choice we're going to sit for a moment you can also sit up on a couch or on a block or a blanket. So again, take care of your needs. Make sure that you are taking care of yourself and let your eyes soften inwardly. You can keep your eyes open if it feels more resourceful for you. You can close your eyes. Couple of rounds of Ujjayi breath before we release it. Listen to the breath blessing of the breath. 
the song of nourishment in the form of your breathing, of prana, of life force, of your beating heart, your pulsing cells. And you can let your ujjayi breath go and let the breath breathe you for a few moments here. If you're studying this text, if you are well versed in it, if you are new to it, if you are in any way interested in the Bhagavad Gita, you can read it with this teaching, these teachings in mind, in heart, that it's a song that the universe is singing as it sings itself into being. And that it's singing its creative pulse is a blessing, is a gift to life in all of its ups and downs, in its ferocity and flourishing and decay and drama and trauma is a gift. And that as you move, as you breathe, you are continuously in your relationship with it building, creating, cultivating a vessel that can hold it, receive it, and allow it to move. So to where you are, right where you are in this moment, we're gonna bring the hands into Anjali Mudra and we're gonna offer the place you are in with all of its all of its components, everything that it is made of. We're going to offer our blessing to it, our own complexity and how we are a nourishing force. And we're offering this to ourselves and we're offering this to more than ourselves, to each other, to our communities, to the planet through the way that we show up to it. One om together, deep breath in. beautiful rest of your day wherever you are whenever you are Mwah. namaste